Hey, it's me, Nasser, and I'm back after like three, four months, or something along those lines. Can't believe I'm talking to a camera again. I feel like it's been absolutely ages. I've moved on to a vascular surgery rotation from my geriatrics rotation. So I've been spending a good amount of time in theater and the job has been completely different, but I wanna talk about that in a separate video, different to this one. Today's video is about my first ever night shift. Night shift one, night shift two, night shift three, night shift four. Now, I don't know how I feel about night shifts. Actually, I do know how I feel. I feel kind of scared, I feel kind of nervous, and this is my first one, so I don't really know what to expect. It's time to get going. First ever surgical nights, let's go. I've already received some handover from the trauma and orthopedics and neurology F1s but I'll talk to you a little bit more about that when we head downstairs. Let's go. Ooh, okay. Let's go. On my way to work now, it's 7 p.m. That feels kind of mad, but I'm going early because I want to pass by um, M&S to pick up some food and snacks for throughout the night, a Red Bull, just in case I get really sleepy and need to stay awake, some instant coffee, because I think we're out in the vascular surgery office. In my day job, I'm now working in vascular surgery, so I'm the vascular surgery F1, or one of them. Now on nights, the surgical F1 covers four different surgical specialties. So we cover vascular surgery, general surgery, trauma and orthopedics, and urology. So you have four times the number of patients that you can get called about that you might have to do things for. It sounds like four times the stress, to be honest. On top of that, you don't have the usual number of seniors that you would throughout the day. So during the day, we have, I think, three or four registrars who are around one SHO and I think anywhere between one and like three consultants. Now overnight, on site, you have one F1, which is me, one SHO, and one general surgery registrar. The other surgical specialty registrars and the consultants are on call, but they're not on site. So they're at home sleeping, and if we need them, then we can give them a call and ask them to come in or give us advice over the phone or whatever. So they're not in the hospital like they would be during the day. So that's kind of the biggest differences that we're going to see between night and day. Also, during the day, I usually, you know, have to see all of the patients um, with my seniors, whereas now in the nighttime, you're basically putting out fires and trying to keep people alive throughout the night until the next day when the day team comes back and they can take care of all the usual problems that a patient might have. So I won't be expected to see all the patients, but I will get called about all of them if something needs to be done. But long story short, it's gonna just be very different than my sort of day job <laughs> as a vascular surgery F1. And I don't know, on one hand, I'm excited to see how it goes. On the other hand, I'm definitely a little bit nervous. I think that's the end of the ramble that I wanted to go on for now in the car. I think I'm gonna turn off this light because it is a little bit blinding. And um, I'll catch you guys in a bit. Uh, yeah, catch you guys in a bit. Peace. Let's go. All right, that's it. All dressed and ready to go. Start this night shift. Catch up with you at some point. Peace. Pretty hectic, not gonna lie. There's a lot going on. And you're just one person coming for specialties, which is a bit mad. Anyways, let's see how it goes. Just running some urgent blood down to the lab. Just chilling here in the office getting bleeped like absolute crazy. Got these, a little snack, this nice coffee. Even though I just had a coffee, but I can feel my eyes burning already, so I gotta wake up. Let's see who bleeped me. All right, so it's about 2 a.m. I'm still alive, everything is going okay. Just gonna have my lunch, middle of the night food. I don't know what to call it. And yeah, haven't fallen asleep just yet. We'll hopefully get some some time to rest later on, but things are going okay so far. One step at a time. All right, had some food and a very quick power nap. Maybe like five, 10 minutes or so. But I got woken up by my good friend, the bleep. So heading back upstairs now. I've got a plan, I've got a plan. I wanna bang through a couple of things and then hopefully, 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 fingers crossed, get some actual rest. We'll see though. We'll see. I want to jinx it one thing at a time. Oh my god. I haven't left work during the day in like months. I haven't seen this sunlight 
when going to work or when leaving from work. It feels kind of weird, you know? It's sun on my face. Very rough night. Can't travel about it in the car. Damn, damn. That was crazy. Let's get out of long home. But first, I have these little candies in the car with me at all times to quench my hunger. All right, so first half of the night was going pretty well, actually. Everything was going smooth. It wasn't that busy. No one was too sick or unwell and everything was okay. And then about halfway through the night, we get a cardiac arrest call or a crash call. This is when a member of staff thinks that a patient is very, very unwell, you know, is in the process of dying. And they put out this hospital-wide call to a lot of different members of the specialty team who are usually quite senior and can help with this type of situation. I get one of those calls, I rush over to where the patient is, and they're already doing CPR, and there's, you know, everyone there. The anesthetist, ITU, heart, all the registrars, the med reg, everyone was there. So I approached at the tail end of this cardiac arrest call when they were finishing CPR and the patient was dead. About halfway through the night, I watched this patient die, which was pretty horrific to be honest. And it's crazy because, you know, after that happened, it was just like, okay, have to move on and, you know, deal with the other jobs that are waiting for you, the other tasks that you need to do, the other unwell patients. And it's just crazy that you have to dissociate and turn off like this and, you know, move on to the next thing. And, continue your job. I was halfway through the shift, there was still plenty to do. It's a tough one, honestly. Following that, the night just got worse, took a, a major downhill in terms of busyness, uh, unwell patients, stress, and tasks. My SHO, the person directly more senior than me, was really, really nice. Made me feel very warm and welcome on my first ever night shift. Three more nights to go, and I'll be done with my first string of nights. Very much looking forward to sleeping. I think I'm just gonna eat something and go straight to bed. So I'll see you guys there when I'm home. It is 6.45 p.m. of the next day of after I went to sleep. I don't think I even filmed anything before I went to sleep. I came home, I ate food, immediately showered and got into bed and slept all the way until 5.30 p.m which is crazy, I honestly did not expect that to happen. I thought I might wake up around two, three, four, somewhere there, but I'm ha happy I got the rest. But that also means I've had like no time at home before I need to leave the house again. I'm just sitting here writing the speech for that YouTube health talk that I'm gonna give in a couple of days. I was sitting here just minding my own business, catching up with my girlfriend, going through my emails, watching YouTube videos, etc. When I got an email from the official strategic health partnerships manager at YouTube asking if I wanted to give a brief talk at the YouTube health event which is happening next week. I want to w welcome everybody here in the room today but uh, also to those joining us online. Which I was invited to a very long time ago and I said yeah of course I'll attend but I'd never for a second considered uh, giving a talk. I am very very nervous when it comes to public speaking. I'm now delighted to introduce Nasir to the stage to, to give a little bit more of a sort of on the ground perspective. Sounds very counterintuitive given that the videos that I make here on the platform are watched by hundreds of thousands of people sometimes, even millions of people sometimes. And it's something that I've always known that I want to work on, that I want to get better at because I think I should be good at public speaking and hence I'm gonna try and work on it and get over that fear. I just need to say yes <laughs> and then I'll come up with a speech and I'll be okay, but I need to get over it. I think I'm gonna sit down and just put my initial thoughts down onto a piece of paper and see how it goes can't believe it's happening so fast and that I actually signed up to this. Yeah, just realizing I have like no time. This is the problem with being on call or on night shifts. Your shifts are 12 hours. And so by the time you wake up and get ready and go to the hospital and then do your shift, leave the hospital, come back, wind down, eat something and sleep, you feel like you've spent your entire day at the hospital because you have barely any time at home. That's exactly how I feel right now. But I'm gonna finish this and get going. Hey guys, um, I'm actually just showing up at the parking now spent the drive-in catching up with Alexia because um, we haven't had any time to chat and catch up on each other's lives. Wow, this parking is full today. But here we are for night shift two. It feels honestly so strange showing up to work at this time. I'm so confused about what day it is and what time it is. My circadian clock is getting all over the place and backwards. 
Fingers crossed, today is not as horrific as yesterday. Reflecting on the events that happened yesterday, it was pretty horrific. So yeah, hopefully things go a little bit better today. I have one day of experience under my belt. Let's do what we can with that. Change, take handover from the day team and get started. <laughs> We're doing okay. More urgent bloods to run down. Still early though. I think it's like 11, so plenty of time for anything to happen. We'll see. All right, guys. I'm in the general surgical office right now. Getting bleeped a decent amount, but nothing crazy so far. Just chasing up some jobs from the day team and hoping nothing goes wrong. Nice. Just as I said it as well. This is what it looks like, by the way. Okay, let's call and see what's going on. So yeah. All right, bleep has been dealt with. I figured this is as good a time as any to share with you my snacks on this night shift. I've got whatever these are, which Kenji introduced me to like ages ago in medical school. These chocolate chip cookies. I don't even like chocolate, honestly, but when I was working on MS today, I was like, what do I, I need something. Iced coffee for when I had finished my hot coffee. And then for food, I was kind of scrambled to pick this up. MS. Should be good. Gonna go review a couple of patients post op, do some bloods and things, and check in with you in a bit. Alright, we have made it until 2 a.m. I'm actually really awake, a lot more awake than yesterday. I think because I actually managed to sleep for a long amount of time. And time to get some food in. I'm gonna go heat this in the microwave. I'm currently in the vascular surgery office, which is where I usually am for my day job. Familiar with this place, I know it well. Uh, so it's my little comfort place. I'm gonna eat this food and then if things aren't too busy and nothing crazy happens, no mad calls, there's actually a bed here. Uh, well, I say bed, but it's like just a sponge. <laughs> but you know what? It'll do. Um, and if I can get even a little bit of rest, that would be great. I'm not gonna get my hopes up. Let me just eat some food, chill, and we'll see. One step at a time. All right, so it's 3.30 in the morning and I've managed to lock myself outside of my offices where I was very happily taking a nap about 10 minutes ago and I left my card inside. So I've just bleeped security and they've finally gotten back to me. They're gonna come and let me back in. It's about 4.30. I'm definitely starting to feel tired. So this is my doctor's mess, which I've made my home for the past two hours or so. That's my bed. When I get a bleep, I go call it on that phone and then use this computer to do what I need to do or go see the patient. And yeah, it's about 6 a.m. now, so a couple hours left. I'm gonna chill it here, eat my cocoa pops and try and get some rest. All right, it's day two of four, done. Definitely much better than yesterday much, much better. I actually had time to sit down and rest, be on the couch, close my eyes. I feel lucky to be honest. Much, much better. Woo! All right, team, let's head home. I spent the hours of about 3 a.m. until 7, like lying down on a bed slash couch and just waking up every half an hour or so to answer a bleep and then going back to like little snuggle snuggle mode on the couch which was actually really nice i didn't sleep at all but i rested for a lot of that i was just sitting down with my eyes closed trying to sleep but uh, i couldn't sleep i think it's because i knew that you know i'm in the hospital i can get cold at any time my brain was or my mind was racing with you know, how, did I do this? Did I do that? Is my patient okay? So I couldn't get sleep. This is Alexia. Let's say hi. Hey, Bob. That was so weird. They were like one to seven. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, I completely forgot I was vlogging until about five minutes ago. Um, it's about 6.30 now. I actually woke up a full hour earlier than I set my alarm. I woke up at 4.30 which is actually great because I wanted to have time to work on my talk for the YouTube health event coming up in a couple of days. I think I woke up that early because I actually managed to get some good rest earlier in the night. Thinking back on it, it's kind of surreal that I was in the hospital like 
laying down on a couch or cuddled up and just answering bleeps every half an hour, getting out of bed, seeing if it's an emergency and I need to go in person or if I can just do it from my computer or if I can offer advice or whatever and then going back to snuggle until my bleep woke me up again. Quite a strange sense of serenity and peacefulness that I didn't expect on the night shift after that first night which was just horrendous and had absolutely no time to sleep like that at all. But anyways I'm actually really happy with the little speech that I've written. It's about 2,000 words and originally yeah 2200 and originally when I before I said it out loud I thought it was going to be way over my allocated t speaking time of 10 minutes but it actually came up to 9 minutes and 50 seconds which is amazing to say that I'm nervous is a massive understatement all right this is an official YouTube organized event and we've got a real mix of people here from NHS uh, stakeholders full disclosure I don't entirely know what that means but it, it's on the script um, <laughs> We've got obviously lots of uh, different healthcare professionals, clinicians, we've got some scientists um, and uh, charities, think tanks. So it's a really diverse group of people here today. It's a very sort of formal event that kind of stretches out beyond what I'm used to with my YouTube channel, where I talk directly to my audience and my community who are largely university students, you know, or medical students or doctors. There will be a lot of doctors at the event. I feel like this is a really good example of me practicing what I preach. So. I often say to people to do the thing that makes them uncomfortable, to do the thing that they're not used to, that they're a bit scared of, because it's gonna make you better at it, it's gonna give you experience, you're gonna learn a lot, etc. And this is that thing for me. I'm definitely nervous and scared. The very easy thing to do would have been to just say, no, sorry, I'm too busy, I'm on night shifts. I can't prepare for this, I can't do it. But I was like, you know what? Let me just say yes and I'll figure out the rest later. I want to reflect on this whole night shift thing a little bit. Basically, I woke up today at 4.30 p.m. Right up until now, I just feel so bad physically. Like, I feel like my heart is racing. I'm like not sure if it's daytime or nighttime. I don't remember what day it is. I feel like tired yet very awake at the same time. I just feel like my body's releasing a lot of cortisol and I'm like in a high stress fight or flight mode, even though I just slept and woke up now. But I haven't felt like I've relaxed, like I've slept, but I haven't felt like I've been relaxed during that sleep. And it's just very weird to have your day flipped around like this. I mean, I come home, my sister is sleeping and I quickly get to bed pretty much before she wakes up to start her day. I sleep throughout the day while my sister wakes up and goes to work and then she comes home. Wait, I'm so confused. The point that I'm trying to make is, okay, <laughs> that my, my schedule and my sister's schedule, who I live with and she's next door, are just completely flipped, completely reversed. We don't see each other at all. She's like crazy to think about. We, we live in the same house and we just have our, you know, lives completely flipped in terms of day night. Definitely not fun. Would not recommend and would not do unless I, <laughs> unless I absolutely had to. So two night shifts down, two night shifts to go. I just pray, pray, pray that it's calm, quiet, and doable like it was yesterday. The thing is, you just don't know. You literally have no idea what it's gonna be like. I'm gonna practice my speech one more time, and then we'll get going. Let's do it. Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Nasser Karma, and I'm a doctor working in the NHS. I remember when I first started working, I didn't really mind being on call, I didn't really mind weekend shifts because when I was a medical student, like all days were the same. I feel like there wasn't such a big divide into weekdays and weekends. I would study both during the week and during the weekends and I would go out and have fun both during the week and the weekend. So it wasn't a very big kind of obvious split for me. But now I really feel like when I'm working on the weekend, I'm like, oh, I'm missing uh, my social time. I'm missing that fun and relaxation because when you work the weekend and you have weekdays off, you know, everyone else is working during the weekdays. So I can't hang out with them. I can't go out and do all the fun things that people would normally do on the weekend. So you don't feel like you get that part of the social interaction that maybe you had before starting, starting work. And now my girlfriend, Alexia, is visiting. She actually just landed in London today, but I'm not gonna get to see her for another two full days because I'm working these night shifts. These are the times when it like hits me the hardest that like, oh, I'm working on the weekend, I'm working unsociable hours. This is not a fun part of being a doctor. This is not an enjoyable aspect. Like it's something to seriously think about and consider. This is when it hits the hardest, I guess. You know what sucks the most about on-call shifts or night shifts? It's that they're very lonely. You spend such a big amount of time completely by yourself. You know, yesterday in my 12 hour shift, I probably spent 
11 hours by myself without my SHO or my registrar. You know, just me going to see patients, dealing with unwell patients, doing all the computer work. Yeah, be, like having your food in the middle of the night or the equivalent of lunch. There's so much less socializing and people to people interaction outside of obviously the work context, you know, like I'm talking to and dealing with healthcare professionals throughout the whole night. But um, in terms of just sitting down and like having a chat like you would during the day with other people in the office with you, you don't really get that when you're on call or on nights because um, there's the minimum, minimum amount of staffing and everyone is like stretched in and doing their own thing. So it's a lot more lonely than working during the day. And, you know, you guys know me, I'm a, I'm a very sociable person. <laughs> I like I like talking to people and interacting. Some of the negatives of uh, these nights. I'm gonna put on some music so I can just zone out and vibe. I'll catch you guys in a bit. Peace. Hello. It is 1.10 in the morning. So far it's actually been, dare, dare I say it, a quiet night. Touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. Been pretty chill, answering bleeps, going to review patients, etc, etc. The usual. Feeling very awake actually. I think I'm gonna have another coffee to stay on this awake train. Maybe when I get naturally a bit more tired later on think about having a cheeky nap it's too early in the night i feel like it's too good to be true to go away and rest now my sho is lovely We're having some good chats it's pretty much it not much to update you on it's kind of kind of boring in the night when no one is here things are going slow so i'm trying to do some useful things on my portfolio filling out forms sending off like CBDs, reflections, because believe it or not, even when you finish medical school, you still have a portfolio as a doctor where you have to like show different competencies and things that you've done throughout the year to prove that you're a good doctor, a doctor who's learning, a doctor who's capable of doing certain procedures. So the portfolio stays annoyingly enough. So I'm just trying to work through some of that stuff. I think in about an hour, I'll go have some food and catch up with you later. Peace. Hey guys. All right, I'm back up in the surgical office. It's 2 a.m., which means it's time for food. I've got this chicken and tomato risotto. It is what it is. Just need some food. I'm getting proper hungry. I'm feeling very awake right now. And check it out. I am watching the KSI Misfits Boxing event that just happened tonight, like literally a couple of hours ago. KSI doing an absolute madness in the YouTube boxing scene, just UK YouTube in general. I've been looking forward to this for a while now, and of course it's on my night shift, so I can't watch it live, but it's already happened. I'm just gonna watch the highlights and see what went down. Maybe a cheeky YouTube boxing event for me in the, in the not so near future. We'll see, we'll see. Let's watch and enjoy. Virgo, 29 years old. Sad. During my food and chill time? No. All right, that was actually serious. I need to have a quick read of the notes and then head downstairs. It has been four hours since you last saw me. Four hours of like back to back to back to back emergencies. That was not fun. Please, Lord, just let me finish this meal in peace. Please, please, please. Just some, some downtime, some quiet time. See you guys in a bit. All right, guys, it's about 6.30. Just finished that food. I'm gonna set up a cap on this bed and try and get a little bit of rest. Hopefully the bleep doesn't go off. I'll catch you in a bit. Peace. Hey everyone. I've just realized every single morning when I come back to sleep, I always tell myself that I want to pick up the camera and like say something or share a few thoughts that I have. And I just pass out every single time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, keep, I keep forgetting to talk to you guys and say hello in the morning because I'm just so tired. Anyways, now it is the night of my last night shift. Okay, so this is my last night. Thank God. I've definitely had enough. And um, it's just been a scramble since I woke up because I've been trying to finalize and prepare that speech. Turns out preparing a speech for a talk while you're on nights is not that easy. I think it's pretty much done now. I've got everything ready. I just need to practice it so I don't absolutely embarrass myself, which I definitely will, but it's okay. It's all part of the learning experience. Hello everyone. It's currently 2.15 in the morning. I have crossed off pretty much all the jobs that were handed over to me by the day team and reviewed and managed two sick patients. I think it's time to sit down and eat some food, hopefully get a little bit of relaxation in. For my talk, 
I wanted to have like cue cards or print the speech printed so that I could look down on it if I ever forgot something and needed to look at it. So what I've done is I've taken this little journal and I've just like stuck my speech into the pages over here so I can like flip through it as I go along. I think I've pretty much, well not memorized everything, but I have a good idea of what the speech looks like. But without this, I feel like I would get really nervous and scared and probably like fumble over my words. I'd rather have it, it's almost like a safety blanket, you know. I'm so excited for these night shifts to be over. I feel like they really dragged out. Like four nights is a long time. It's like over half a week where your schedule is just completely flipped upside down. I feel like you don't even know what's going on, what time of day it is, what day it is generally. So yeah, really excited to have them over. And I'm actually off for the entire next week because I'm trying to get the days right. Today is Monday. I have Tuesday and Wednesday off by default. And then I took Thursday and Friday off as annual leave because uh, Alexia is here. And so that way I have a whole week off. I'm gonna have some fun. I've got a bunch of friends from Jordan visiting, which is nice. I haven't seen those guys in a while. And yeah, just really looking forward to, to finishing this shift. Eating my food up in the microwave. It should be done soon. I'm gonna watch some cheeky YouTube. And then I think I'm gonna set up a camp over there on that bed and just put the bleep next to my head every time it rings get up come to this phone answer the bleep and then use the computer here to do what i need to do or go down and see the patients if i need to catch up with you guys in a bit peace i was just asleep for an hour all right let me correct myself i didn't sleep but i had my eyes closed and i was trying to sleep just got cold for something absolutely did not need to get called about uh, but since i'm awake i'm gonna check a couple of things real quick from the sick patients that we saw earlier and yeah try and go back and get some rest got out of bed tired to bleep and then mindlessly i left to go to the bathroom and locked myself out of the same office i locked myself out of a couple of days ago All right, team, I'm back home, finished the night shift. Let's go. I've actually just ordered some breakfast from this place called Egg Slut, which is a very strange name, but it tastes very, very good. Highly recommend. Anyways, I think that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope it gave you a little bit of an insight into what life is like as a junior doctor working a night shift here in the UK. I know I definitely would have appreciated a video like this when I was a medical student or even a high school student applying to medical school in the first place. So I hope you guys find it useful and there's some value there. If you enjoyed the video, do let me know in a comment down below if there's anything else you want me to film or talk about or share my experiences about. Also do let me know. I know I haven't uploaded in a while, uh, so thank you for watching if you've stuck around. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I'm now delighted to introduce Nasir to the stage to, to give a little bit more of a sort of on the ground perspective. Thank you. Hi there, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Nasser Karma and I'm a doctor working in the NHS. The talk I'm gonna give today is a little bit different than the other ones that you're gonna hear. I want to talk to you about my journey on YouTube and how I reached 1 million subscribers late last year. Um, and so if we could all just take a moment to pull out our phones, search Karma Medic and hit that subscribe button, <laughs> that would really help me out and I'd appreciate it. And then he looks over to the surgeon, he puts his hand down, he stops him mid-surgery and he says, do you know who this guy is? He's got like a million followers on Facebook. <laughs> I don't have a Facebook page. <laughs> and over the last five years, I've seen firsthand the power and the impact of the connection you can make with people through digital media. And I hope that now in my job as a doctor, I can use my YouTube channel to help bridge that uh, medical knowledge gap between healthcare professionals and non-healthcare professionals, um, and also give a bit of an insight into our lives and what we see and deal with on a daily basis as doctors. Thank you.